Welcome to Join Our Town. I'm Effie Johnson, your host. We're starting today's show with a discussion about transitioning from homelessness and addictions with Mr. Donnie Wheeler, president of Refuge Memphis, Pastor Matt Anzavino, senior pastor of the House of Memphis, and Mr. Ben and Mrs. Crystal Matthew, graduates of the program. Welcome to the program today. Good to be Thank here. You. Thank you. I'm Thank glad you. I got through all those names. <laughs> <laughs> I'm starting saying first names. Amen. There you go. There you go. So you guys have the uh, program or ministry, Refuge, Refuge Ministries, or is it? Refuge Transitional. Refuge Transitional. Ministry. Housing. Housing. Wow. Uh -huh. So tell me about that. Um, Mr. Wheeler, what, what about the trans Transitional Center and the mission of it? Well, what, what we found out, Effie, is uh, there's a lot of people on the streets uh, for no reason of their own, no fault of their own. They just, circumstances has put them there. Uh, uh, one of our most recent people that we rescued from the streets, and I call it rescuing because that's what you do. Uh, we got a call uh, from actually from the police department that there was a lady living in, a van, in her SUV yeah. with four children and they had noticed that she'd been there. So we went, sent, sent our team out <clears throat> to talk to her and verify uh, what was going on. We brought her into our, our transitional center, uh, got her set up, uh, went, put her through our program. Uh, today, she's uh, living on her own uh, through the Section 8 housing program, so she has complete, and it, it's just, uh, it's just a wonderful thing to be able to, to rescue people from the streets. Well, um, I mean, Pastor Matt, talk to us a little bit about the, the partnership you have between your church, the house, and the uh, Refuge Transitional Center. What's so amazing about this, Effie, is <coughs> when refuge is used by God to, like Donnie said, bring someone off the streets, they're, they're put into a program, the clients are put into a program of rehabilitation and 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 I can't think of a better place to connect with than with a local church because the church is supposed to be a place where the Word of God, the message of God, the hope of God is presented. And so we've just been blessed to be able to link arms with refuge, to be able to be that extension of God's hand, the transformation of a life, the mind, the heart, to be brought into a family. You know, think about that. You're, you're on the streets. <laughs> you're, you're rescued. You're not only introduced to Christ, but you're introduced to the family of God. That's just an amazing, amazing opportunity. And we counted an honor to, do, to be able to do that. And earlier in one of our other programs, we had another uh, church organization partnership where they were speaking to this very thing that proximity uh, and that, that makes, uh, and I can't remember all the exact quote, but the proximity and the practice of coming together is important for you to uh, to do is the collaboration is very important, but their impact on families is is ultimately what you're trying to do is change mm -hmm. lives. And today you've brought um, the Matthews with you to to share a little bit about their story. So so tell us how did you guys first meet? It was an amazing encounter. We we have two services at the house, and in between service, I'm in the foyer. We've got a cafes, you know, there's coffee, you know, and I had the privilege of meeting all different kinds of people. Well. I remember Crystal walking up to me and she said, uh, uh, it's my first time here. And I'm like, well, thank God you're here. And she said, I want to ask you a question. She said, am, am I welcome here? And it kind of, so you are, 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 you, are you welcome <laughs> here? You know, yeah. I said, what do you mean? And she could tell by my you know, response. She goes, well, on account of all my tattoos and, and all the things. And I, I looked at her and I remember I, I didn't, I answered by saying this, you're about to find out. You're about to find out. And so we go into the service, power of God moves graciously. And at the end of our service, we have altar calls. We believe that, uh, and you come out and, and, and be true about your decision. And I remember seeing Crystal and Ben standing right there. And it, it startled me at first. You know, I'm like, I, we're, you're the lady that I, mm -hmm. I met in the foyer. And so I grabbed her hand. I'll never oh, forget it. You. I grabbed her hand. And I said, I told the church, I said, Crystal asked me a question. Mm -hmm. Wanted to know if she would be welcome in the house. And I said, hey, house, what do you say? And welcome. the place erupted with, wow. 
I'll never forget that moment because not only did she experience the presence of God, but she also experienced the family of God saying, we love you. No matter who you are, no matter what you've done, no matter where you come from, color, background, no matter, you're loved in the house. So Crystal, tell me, (laughs) what did you think about it when you first walked in? You asked this question, got this cool pastor with this short hair. Well, first of all, (laughs) we took the bus. We were living in a different area, so we took the bus to church. And when we got off at the bus stop, I saw this big, huge church. And, you know, I was just taken back. And I looked at my husband and I said, Ben, why do you keep bringing me to these places where I do not belong? Mm. And there's a sign in front of our church that, you know, kind of flashes the things that are going on in our church and just encouraging messages. And right as I was saying that, true story, as soon as I said that, it flashed on the sign, you belong here. Mm. And so I was thinking, okay, Lord, okay. So I go on in, you know, and I walk in and Ben, he, he, he excuses himself and leaves me standing in the foyer by myself. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, Ben. Uh, uh, set up. There we go. Set up. Yeah, he set me up. He totally <laughs> threw me under the bus and left me there. So, you know, I, and I'm looking around. There's the coffee connection, and there's so many people. And, and as he said, Pastor Teddy, she is part of the welcoming committee at our church, and she's a great lady. And she is welcoming us, and she could tell that I was really nervous. And so she says, well... Let me introduce you to our pastor, Pastor Matt. And and as he said, I was just, you know, I was kind of um, unsure about the acceptance because Mm. of, you can't see them now, but I have quite a few tattoos and they're not small. So (laughs) I was a little reluctant, but as he said, he said, you know, I was just like, I've got a lot of tattoos and I'm just not sure if I fit in. And he said, are you serious? Well, you're about to find out. And that's exactly what he said. Well, Ben, (laughs) you set set your wife up. Yes, ma'am. And (laughs) so what drew you to the house first before I'm sure you even even knew about that? I had actually been in a different rehab rehab program before that and I had went to the house and the service was just amazing right and we had went down to another program me and her was actually living on the street and after um, I had got out of rehab we were living on the street and we went down to Jacob's well and there was a man there that has he actually attends the house and he invited us to church and I said well where's the church at and he said it's the house Memphis and it rang a bell for a minute and I thought I said, oh, I've been to that church. And um, so we had actually, me and her, we decided, we said, you know what, we're fixing to go. And we went. Wow, and you guys have children? Yes, So they're they're attending and you're bringing them along. So this has just been a powerful thing. What I'm inspired about is that your husband (laughs) said, we fixed to go to this church. He sure did. And you followed him there. Yes, ma'am. And look what God is doing. Yes, ma'am. So tell me about what, how are they engaged now with what you guys are doing in the church? They have, they have really built, Crystal and Ben both have become our measuring mark, if you will, our watermark on mm-hmm. our programs. Wow. And in our, in our meetings, we, we often refer to this is the level of acceptance we want. This is what we want our program to do. Uh, this is, uh, <clears throat> I, I just get choked up sometimes when yeah. I think about yeah. what, what we're able to do, mm-hmm. you know. You saved a whole family. Yes. Yes, and a generation yeah. beyond that. And so uh, it's just, don't you start crying because y'all already hear about the whole TV audience. So I'm going to start crying. Yeah. <laughs> but I understand how that, that, um, that makes you feel because you really made a difference in a family's life. And sometimes you showed up not knowing what you were showing up to. And the, the God uses all types of uh, ways yes. of communicating. I mean, you didn't know, your tech people didn't know that uh-uh. that was going to be the right time, that that would no. flash, and you would know yeah. and be affirmed that yeah. you belong here. So, Pastor, why is it so important that your church do this, reach out? If you, if you, if you let me, I, not just the house, but, but every church in the neighborhood, um, if there ever was a time for the church to be the church wherever they are, it's now. Yeah. It's now. The world, the world is needing the church to rise up and not be the religious institution. Yeah. N- not yeah. be the, the you know the church that's stuck in the ways that we've always done it, but a church that is willing to embrace what's happening in our society and answer the hard questions and love people through 
every situation they're going through. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah, thank God yeah. that we've been able to do that at the house. But I just, man, if there was a way that I can just challenge pastors and yes. all yeah. over the city, come yeah. on, the, yeah. the time is now. The time yeah. is yeah. Now. now. Revival yeah. is truly now. Yeah. Yeah. And to see uh, a man bring his family to the church and knowing that's the place, that is the re place of refuge. Yes. That's the place to go. Yes. So tell me, what does what has this meant to your family, Crystal? Everything. <laughs> it is, I mean, we were not a family anymore. We were just in separate places and, and just thrown about. And our daughter was not with us and just lost in the world alone without that bond of family and that bond of church. And it's just made all the difference in our lives. Everything, I mean, everything is different now. And Mr. Wheeler, how do you get people to participate in the program? Not everyone's going to just come and say, I, w I want help. I mean, how do you get people to do that? I, we've gotten a, a reputation out now uh, of what we're doing in the Memphis area. And uh, the, the good and the sad of that is I get calls every single day, uh, referrals. I've got a family member, I've got a church member, I've got somebody this, I've got somebody that, referring us to circumstances like that. The sad part is our, uh, we're limited as far right. as our ability of how many people we can help at right. one time. Right. Uh, but, uh, but you're seeing success. But very much so, very much so. And one thing too Ed, that, uh, that I think is so crucial in, that in our program is, is, the, is the Ben and the Crystals. They're now giving back to yes, this program, wonderful. working in the program. They're becoming, they're, they're having people hold them accountable, but, but then they themselves yes. are, are working and encouraging other people. And to see Crystal pray, pray on her knees the other night with a homeless woman oh, wow. and telling her and encouraging her, hey, it can make a difference. Yes, I mean, it's just overwhelming yeah. because when you think about you were on the street, Yes, yeah. ma'am. That you couldn't stay in the same places together because the, the homeless shelters are not set yeah. up that way. And then for you to be sitting here today yeah. Yeah. and yeah. bringing people to the, to the love of the Lord, yeah. yes. this yes. is what it's all about. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. And so while we are getting ready to close this segment out, I, I want you, Crystal, to look into that camera. And I want you to share with some woman, some family, yeah. um, what, what they can how they can have hope, and then close us out in prayer. Um, you just need to know that you are loved, and you do matter. You matter so much. The Lord says that you are of royalty. We are the bride of Christ, and he wants to give you that love and, the, and that place to belong. And there are people out there who do take the time to care. And, and we're here, we're, we're at Refuge Memphis and we're waiting. And just the willingness is all you need, just the willingness, you come as you are. That's what the Lord says, come as you are. Amen. And he says, whatever you have done for the least of these, you have done for me. Mm -hmm. And so that's where we are now. We just wanna help and we just wanna love you. So come in and, and let us do that for you because it does get better and things do change. Amen, thank Amen. you so much. That's yes, a beautiful word. Thank you so much for sharing your life with us. Thank you for allowing me to. If you're struggling to get back on your feet after homelessness and addiction, you can get help. Reach out to the Refuge Transitional Center program. They can help you. Crystal's there. Ben is there. There's help. We'll be right back with more joy in our town. Every hour of every day, someone needs help and doesn't know where to turn. That's where 211 comes in. Hi, I'm Kevin Kirkland. 211 is the easy to remember number when you're in need of social services. Things such as food, shelter, utility bills, or even help with a family member. Call 211 for the help you need. And all calls are completely confidential. So call 211 to find help and to give help. It may seem intimidating, but really, it's one of the easiest things you can ever do. I've been practicing. Good. You're going to need it. <laughs> Help America's youth. Be a friend. Be a mentor. Just be there. Go to bigbrothersbigsisters.org.
Welcome back to Joy in Our Town. Well, if you're like me, you've probably heard someone say that God called them to do something, and then they stepped out in faith and did it. Well, our first guest for today did just that. She's the founder and executive director of Douglas Cornerstone, a Christ-centered mentoring program. Please help me welcome Miss Mia Pete to the program. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. So I just love, like in the opener, we, we share that you, you got said to do it and then you stepped out and did it. Correct. So, so tell me, what, what did he inspire you to do? Well, he inspired me to let others know, first of all, that he had made a difference in my life and that the things that he had done in my life that he was able to also do in the lives of others. I had gone through a period of hopelessness and I wanted to let others know that um, he inspired the hope back in me and I just wanted to be an example of that hope in the lives of others. So, um, Douglas Cornerstone, why, why did you choose the word corner, Cornerstone? Well, of course, you know I use Douglas because it's the community and I love my Douglas neighborhood. Yeah. And I had to honor Christ. You know, it was him that's been the foundation in my life that kept me stable, that kept my mind, right. kept my emotions, you know, yeah. that kept me with the will to live and to desire greater. So that was my foundation. And so your, your program um, or your organization serves youth and families. Correct. And so what are you seeing in youth um, and, and, and even in families that they're facing in the community of Douglas that, that, that you really had to focus on in helping to uh, move them toward hope? Well, the thing that I realized that's missing in Douglas, because Douglas was a place of um, great pride yeah. and great hope, and I think what's missing is that generation that was in the middle. Mm. Um, not the elders and not the children. And I tell my friends now that we're their generation. Those little ladies that will pull us to the side when they saw us doing something wrong and told us in love that they expected more of us, that our parent would be disappointed or to praise us and to tell us that what we're doing was just so awesome. You know, it was those people that inspired me. And I just wanted to be there in the lives of the youth. And I remember, I mean, Douglas, you know, my dad taught school, uh, taught Douglas Elementary for 31 years. I, I know you guys knew each other. Right. And, and then I know um, about the, the Juneteenth that kind of was birthed from that community. Um, you have, uh, the, the, I don't know if you remember the parades. Oh, we still oh, bring still the parades, parades back. Mm -hmm. So all of those things, like you're saying, that was how the community engaged with each other. Everybody knew each other, everybody connected. So how are you helping to reignite that Douglas pride? Well, we actually have two different programs. One of them is the Turn Up Today Assembly Program, which is centered toward the youth, where we have two age groups, nine to 12 year olds and 13 to 18 year olds, where we've partnered with Douglas Community Center, where we actually do the uh, program is facilitated in their facility. And we have two groups where we give um, lessons on character building, on um, relationship enhancement, and pretty much just um, let them know that their lives matter, that mm. someone cares, and that we want to help see them through. So do you minister to children um, uh, and adults um, that, that you work with? I know you do the more, um, uh, what is it, the social emotional uh, support. Uh, what about the spiritual component, the spiritual development? How does that work? Well, just by, he said that people overcome by the words of your testimony and the blood of the Lamb. So I share my testimonies. I tell them all the great things he's done in my life and the things that I still see him doing today. People lose hope because they just, they don't know that greater is available. So I just let them know that greater is available through Christ. Wow, I love that statement, greater is available. Sometimes we don't believe that something is attainable for us. We think it's for somebody else. Right. So how do you convince people that they deserve to have good in their lives, that they deserve hope and they deserve greater? Well, for one thing, I try to, in meeting people, everyone has a gift, wow. you know, and just tell them something awesome about themselves. Yes. Why they're telling me about all the reasons why they don't have hope. You know, just tell them that they have a gift. They were birthed here for a purpose. And um, no matter how hard and difficult those obstacles may look that are around you, that it's that obstacle that hurts you is nine times out of 10, that thing that God wants to use for your life to be a blessing in the lives of others. Oh, and that's so hard to hear sometimes. I mean, right. gosh, cause you know, I think about that. Who wants to go through it in order to help, help someone, someone else, else, you know? But there's no greater feeling to know that your lives matter, your life mattered in the lives of others. 
And that's what our pur- a lot of our purpose is to, to inspire other people. And, and, you know, one of the things that you said, and I've heard it said before, uh, you know, folks were like, where are all the old people at? Where are the people that go pour to other people? And one of my friends said, we are the old people. Right. I'm like, y'all the old people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the young people. <laughs> right. But you're right. It's like we have to um, begin to, that selfless act of pouring into other people and encouraging them. Do you see that there's a challenge with even your peers that that's not happening? Well, we're getting better. Okay. You know, we are getting better. I can say that I have seen some improvement in the community. Um, the youth are excited. Um, matter of fact, last year we tried to get into Union Mission to work with the feeding um, yes. for Thanksgiving. Right. Well, we couldn't get in because everyone in the city was going there. And just <laughs> one of the youth asked me, he said, Ms. Right. Mia, mm-hmm. he said, why can't we feed our own homeless mm-hmm. neighbors? Wow. So that's how our homeless program actually got started by right. the initiative of a youth with just that simple question. Right, because there's more than enough people in need to go around to help. Right. Wow. So um, do you feel that some of, um, some of the youth and adults that commit crime in, uh, in the communities that you're working with uh, um, have, have been truly changed and turned around. Do you, do you see that that, sh- that, that that's changed in your community? The crime is down, maybe reduced because of your efforts? I would say that our crime is down, especially the crimes being committed um, by the youth. Um, and we do have a once a month feeding that we partner with First Baptist Mount Olive Church, 3011 Mount Olive, where we're on the church parking lot and we do a community feast. And they give us opportunities to network with our neighbors, wow. you know, because a lot of the apartment complexes have closed in the city. Yeah. And for low income, a lot of those people have come to Douglas. Wow. But okay. Douglas is really one of those neighborhoods in the community that no one knows about. You know, right. as far as like Binghamton, Orange Mound, Frazier, all the resources and support that are coming there, we're not receiving those supports. So I'm trying to um, let it be known that we're there, as well as to network with the community, find out exactly what the needs are. And with that, we refer them to different resources based on their um, needs. So you're saying there's an influx of folks coming from other areas of Memphis into Douglas, but the, not, the resources not necessarily following them. Right. Wow. And so that's an opportunity. That's an opportunity for other people to help. Right. So do you do you accept volunteers to get involved as well? Yes, we have volunteers and it would definitely be great if we had more volunteers on the last Wednesday of each month when we do the feeding because um, we have like five volunteers that are committed to it. Yeah. But then we're serving food, you know, busy with that. But we want to take the time to have more people talking. to talk to people and just to let them know because you can't look at people and tell what they're going through. You know, and just to have a conversation with them. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. So we want to show them how much we care. They'll give us the opportunity to find out where we can meet their needs. So activity-wise, you have that uh, function that happens once a month. What other activities do you, um, do you have within your program that helps in aiding to build character and, and helping them educationally? Well, we take the youth to camp every year. Um, for our first two years, we went to For the Kingdom Camp. And this past year, we went to Kids Across America, wow. where they have the opportunity. Mm-hmm. <laughs> where they have the opportunity to um, fellowship with other youth and just to realize, first of all, that you're not alone. What you're going through is not any different. You know, to relate with other people that have the same struggles as you, or to um, be able to encourage someone else is rewarding. So just to put them in the atmosphere to not only to be blessed, but to be a blessing and to just learn um, different ways to um, impact the lives of others. Right. And to me, as far as character building, is not to just say that, oh, I'm just so awesome, but character is integrity, you know, and that involves more than just one person. So how is your life making a difference in the life of someone else is what I'm saying as far as character building. So I know you've worked with hundreds of kids by now and and families, so you have to have some stories. Right. Uh, And you share with me one that I thought was really powerful about a young lady that um, found herself in a homeless situation and and you guys got engaged with her and, and made a difference. Tell us a little bit about her. Well, yes, she was a young lady that came to the program because her um, siblings were coming. Um, She was older, so she came to the program. This particular year was her first year there. She was 17, and she turned 18 while she was in the program. Well, upon turning 18, there was um, a problem at home 
with mom. Yeah. And for whatever, however it worked out, she was no longer in the house. And so um, I was missing her at group, so I would ask the youth about her. And they would say, oh, she's doing hair, or she's in um, another area. And so in passing out some things that were distributed to Douglas Thornstone, I stopped by the house, and the aunt informed me that they didn't know where she was, that she had actually ran away. Wow. And so I told the youth at group that they were not keeping her safe by, mm. you know, protecting her that way. So, so that, you're telling me that they kind of knew where she might have been. Of course. You know, children are going to communicate with one another. But I love how you say that you, she's not safe just because you're not sharing that with us. Right, because you feel you're protecting her, she's not safe. And that someone needs to know, she needs to contact an adult and let them know where she is. And she's got three months left in school. She needs to get back in school. And that's all she had left. That's all she had left. So mm -hmm. I had them to uh, get her that message to call me or yeah. somebody. Well, she called one day to let me know that she was okay and where she was. And so I informed her that, you know, you got three months left, you really need to get back in school. And she assured me that she would after she told me she didn't need a ride. Well, a week later, she called me back again and she just said, Miss Mia, would you please come and take me and get me back in school? So I did and because she graduated. Because she was 18, you were able to do that. Right, and she graduated last year. She graduated last year. So do you see her anymore? Actually, uh, her family still lives in the neighborhood. Uh -huh. um, I haven't seen her, no. Yeah, because once you get a person able to move forward, well, That's actually, I want to stay in okay. communication okay. with them, but okay. I don't force it. I got you. I don't, you know, if they give me the opportunity, I'm there, but I don't, you know, Christ doesn't force itself on anyone. I don't want right. to force myself on anyone. Well, I think that's important. That was, you know, that's a question that's kind of sometimes, it could be, yes, I see them and we're interacting. And but I wish I but, could you say know, that. Sometimes it's not like that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to help people at that point, right? Where get they them are. stable, and then let them move on. And so I, I see that you're very comfortable just letting God work. Right. I'm not the Holy Ghost Junior. <laughs> I let him do the work. I love it. <laughs> I, ain't never, I, I, I ain't heard of this T-shirt. <laughs> Holy Ghost Junior. I'm not the Holy Ghost Junior. Right. The new T-shirt for the day. <laughs> <laughs> so before we close out, is there anything encouraging you like to tell our audience today, right in that camera, about how young people can have hope if they're, if they're destitute, if they're going through? I would like to say that um, young children do not care how much you know until they know how much you care. So when we see our children, let's encourage them, let's embrace them, let's let them know that their life matters, and let's reach them, reach them right where they are. Thank you so much, Ms. Pete. You're amazing. You're doing a great work in the Douglas community and for our city. Ms. Pete expressed that the purpose of what she does is to exemplify the agape or unconditional love of Christ to her community. With the love of Christ, we all can start to make a positive change within our local community. Thank you for joining us today for Joy in Our Town.